Welcome, all right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green, back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Wanted to talk about this guy today. This comes from Vaporesso. This is the Lux Kit. I have, I've been using the last few Vaporesso products that have come out, like that Vaporesso Polar Kit, the Vaporesso Lux Kit. I, I haven't used Vaporesso products in a real long time. And like that Polar Kit, I was, I was real surprised with the quality, like real surprised how far Vaporesso has come. This Lux Kit is like a cool, techy, slick feeling mod. I don't love the look of the tank, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more um, later on. But right now, in order to get to know all of this just a little bit better, what we're going to do is go up close, as we often do. That's right. Quick short up, be closey time. Go. All right. Well, this is the Vaporesso Lux kit with the mod and the tank on it. And we come to my first gripe right away. This tank and this mod don't really go together, in my opinion. In any way, you have this really cool, sleek, techy looking mod. And then this very large and intrusive tank. It's big and it's got these big peaks and valleys on it. It's got this huge bubble glass, which by the way, the bubble glass is the only option you get on this tank. It's got this weird proprietary threaded drip tip on it as well. And I personally don't think that these, this, these two things look good together. These look like two separate products that you put together rather than like a cohesive kit. Even just throwing this reload vapor RTA on here, it looks much more at home on this slick device device than this gigantic bubble glass tall drip tip tank. And I realize that that's real nitpicky. That's just something that's purely aesthetics. I feel like when something comes as a kit, it should be, I don't know, a kit. So first let's take a look at this Lux box mod. Real nice, real slick. Like I was saying, real techy feeling. I'm going to use that word a lot in this review. It's real techy feeling. Top to bottom, spring-loaded 510 pin right there. It's made out of this kind of soft touch anodized aluminum all the way around. Here's your fire button. And this is one of those ovally fire buttons that only clicks at the top. That's why you have a little white little indicator right there, but it's real clicky, real clicky at the top right there. Nothing zero, zero clicky at the bottom right there. And when it's all clean and wiped off, these shiny like plastic panels on here just look fantastic. It reminds me of a smartphone or something like that. But as soon as you start handling it and using it, you will have smudge and fingerprints and smudges and fingerprints all over this. So it doesn't maintain that real cool techy look while you're using it. It's just, it's mostly just fingerprints and smears when you're using it. But there is a little notch right here for the battery door to come off and you have two batteries in here. There's no ribbon to hold these in or, you know, there's no ribbon to pull to pop them out. You just kind of yank them out. One thing that I do wish is that the battery sled was a little bit more clearly marked. You can kind of see up here, that's the negative, and you can kind of see, you have to kind of catch it in the right light to see that that's the positive. Other than there's the other, other than those markings, there's no other way to tell how your batteries go in. So just pay attention. And again, nothing catastrophic is going to happen when you put it. Like if I put my battery in like this, nothing catastrophic is going to happen. Even if I tried to fire it up, nothing, nothing's going to happen. The, the mod knows that you have the batteries incorrectly installed. It's just a matter of installing them correctly, which this is not correct. Correctly, this is correctly. Positive here, positive there. The door itself feels real durable. Like I said, it's real shiny and real fingerprinty on one side. And then on the inside, they have this kind of insulation sticker. That's the only way I can describe it. It feels like a soft, like silky sort of matte sticker on there that is really adhesive in there. It could be glued on there. There's, this is, you know, not even possible to take off. And that's nice to just have a little layer of insulation between your batteries and then the metal door. And then this is just held on by three magnets. One one, two, three, boom. Turning our attention to the front and to the display, yeah, same thing. Real nice, techy, shiny, sort of edge to edge, sort of shiny plastic. This definitely isn't glass, but it's like a real shiny plastic on there. And then once you use it, fingerprints, 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 
fingerprints, fingerprints, fingerprints, fingerprints. And you're gonna be touching this a lot because it is a touch screen. So you're gonna give it five clicks to turn it on and pay attention like right here, like right in this area. Look how cool that is. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna light up. The little Lux logo just kind of slowly illuminates from behind and I think that just looks real slick. That's just another element of this mod that I really, really enjoy. If you've used Vaporesso products in the past, you're gonna notice this same screen. This is the same screen and interface that they basically use on the Polar. It's got a clock screensaver, which I actually love the way it looks and I find it really useful. I can see the date and time when I'm not using it and I actually like that. So you see this little lock right there? Well, that lock prevents you from accidentally adjusting anything. These are both, these are all touch sensors down here. So this is gonna be your up and your down and then your menu select button. And then you do one, two, three, the little lock goes away and then you can press and hold on the Vaporesso symbol and that will take you to the menu and you have all the same things, all the same menu functions from the Vaporesso Polar, variable wattage, hard, normal, and soft, curves, super player mode, you have temperature control for stainless steel, nickel, titanium, as well as custom TCR memory functions, bypass, and then the settings menu. And the setting menu is where you're gonna set everything. Time, brightness, puff counter, theme color, uh, we're on red now, let's turn it to, I don't know, blue. And then you're gonna come down here to the vibrate function. So every time I've been pressing one of these buttons in the menu system, the mod vibrates just very slightly, the way that like a smartphone would or like a, you know, Xbox controller would, right? It just is a little bit of vibratiness happening there, which I really like because there's no tactile feedback on these. You're just tapping a touch sensor and to have that little extra amount of feedback, like force feedback. I really like it, but you can, you can turn it off if you're not into it, but whatever, I'm into it. Other than that, it's that really nice Vaporesso display. It shows you everything you need to know. You have battery level indicators. You have your voltage. This is running in variable voltage mode. It's gonna show you, wow, that clock comes on quick. See, that's something that you can adjust, but it's gonna show you your amps. It's gonna show you your resistance and there's nothing attached. That's why we got the nines down here, but it's gonna show you your puff counter as well, which has been reset multiple, multiple times. And then how long you have taken a toot on there. And what's great is as soon as you press the fire button, it locks it. You get that little lock symbol there so you can't accidentally adjust anything. If you want to adjust your voltage or wattage up and down, you have to do the one, two, three. It's gonna unlock and now you're free to adjust your voltage or wattage up and down and you're still gonna get that little vibrate sensation every time you make an adjustment, which again, I really like. Now let's take a quick look at this tank. Like I said before, I don't love the stylings of it. At least I don't like the stylings of it when it's paired with such a cool, sleek, slick looking mod. This looks like more like, you know, the Batmobile from Batman Begins. Real like hard, jagged, dark lines everywhere along the top as well. And then it's got this wonky, weird bubble glass, which I've never been a fan of bubble glass. It's got a nice, smooth AFC, stops in the full open, stops in the full closed, and you can leave it kind of anywhere in between, and it'll stay where you want it to stay without, you know, without much movement side to side or anything like that. And here's where we come to that proprietary threaded drip tip. So the drip tip threads in there, and then you press this, boop, like that to open it. And then you have your big kidney shaped juice fill hole right there, and then you close it back off. It's nice and stiff. When you're opening and closing this, it feels secure when you do that. I genuinely don't know why they included a threaded drip tip like that. It kind of just really bums me out. I would like this tank a lot more if I could rock like, you know, a shorty low pro chop top like 810 drip tip on here. But as it stands, you cannot do that. The coil heads on the inside are pretty fantastic, but we're gonna talk more about those when we get back out to normal view. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna put this all back together. I'm gonna adjust my wattage back down to around 3.6 volts where I like it with this particular coil head. And yeah, that's the Vaporesso. Love Lux kit, top to bottom. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get back out to normal view. We're gonna vape this guy. The tank vapes fantastically and truly and honestly, man, I've been having a real good time 
with this kit it's been a real satisfying vape like i said i'm just i'm so surprised by the quality of vaporesso and their new products when i first first saw this mod it's got that like you know edge to edge sort of glass finish it reminds me of that samsung phone it reminds me of the samsung phone that kent uses that i cannot that i cannot right now remember the name of in fact hey, let's just call kent and ask him what phone he uses Hello. Kent Hill. Dude, what's the fucking occasion, Nick? Hey, I'm really glad you answered the phone. What Samsung, what's that Samsung phone you use? Yeah, you could get the S8, the S9, the S8 Plus, or the S9 Plus. The S9, S9, what's the exact model you have, though? This the one is... that you're calling me on right now is the S9 Plus. The S9 Plus. You know, I'm real, I'm real busy, Nick. Thanks for bothering me, but I, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, hey, thanks, Kent, for telling me the, the phone that you have. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Talk to you later, friend. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll hear from you in here, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Later, bye. Friend. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, thanks, Kent. So, yeah, the feel of it kind of reminds me of that Samsung S9 phone. And if you've seen this phone, then you'll kind of get that difference. It just feels like a very, and I know I've said this word a lot already in this review, techie. Feels real techie. Feels real, feels real slick. So as for the mod itself, there's really not much for me to even complain about, nitpick, or gripe about in any way. I like it overall. Like I've said already 1,000 times at least. I like it. It's real slick. It's real techy. It feels like a cool piece of technology in my hand. The button is real clicky. The touch screen is really easy to interface with. I don't mind. I actually kind of enjoy the little vibratey feedback that you get from, you know, when you press the buttons. The menu system is the Vaporesso menu system. So I've been using it since the Polar Kit. It's really kind of the same thing in here right now. And it's easy. I was able to just pick up this mod because I'm familiar with, you know, the Vaporesso Polar and navigate it, navigate the menu system and get to where I want to get, be able to change the colors, be able to change it into variable voltage mode, you know, be able to do everything I want. I really very much enjoy this mod. Now, as far as the tank goes, I'm not as in love with the tank as I am the mod. Don't get me wrong. This tank vapes fantastically. I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely really like the vape that I get from this tank. These particular coil heads, they have the QF mesh and the QF strip, which are supposed to be two different types of coil heads. They have two slightly different meshes on the inside. Both of mine were labeled at a 0.2. So they're exactly the same resistance. I think the QF strip is supposed to be a little bit lower of a resistance, but mine both came in at the exact same resistance. And truly, honestly, between the QF mesh and the QF strip, the, the difference in vape was un, unnoticeable. They both vaped really well, but I didn't notice, I mean, literally didn't notice any difference but between these two coils. The way that they do their coil heads with the airflow, how it has like this inner chamber. If you look at one of these coil heads, there's like a little brass tube coming up and your airflow comes in from the bottom and up through the center and then outward at your mesh and then up at your mouth hole area. And the whole thing behind that is it makes the air going into your tank warmer so that the rest of the vapor that comes into your mouth is warmer. You're not just pulling air from the outside and it's hitting your coils. You're hitting your air is coming in from the outside and then going into this little chamber, which is supposedly already getting warm from your coils and it warms up the air before it hits your coils and then goes into your mouth. I don't really feel like that really does anything. What it makes for is a real nice, if not a little bit loud, but real nice, swooshy sort of feeling airflow. It feels real nice. I don't honestly notice any real difference between this particular coil head that uses that internal airflow and any other mesh coil head that doesn't utilize that internal airflow. Feels very similar in that it vapes. It's Look, it's a mesh coil head. It vapes real well and you'll get the mesh flavor that you're used to. 
and basically, I mean, it vapes so well, but basically all of my gripes with this are with the tank. I don't like the way it looks. I personally can't stand bubble glass. I don't like the design choices they made on this tank. I think it's real, real weird to have a threaded drip tip that is a proprietary threaded drip tip so you can only use that particular drip tip and you have to unthread it and pull it completely out every time you want to go to refill it. I just feel like that's kind of a, that's kind of a weird choice and is honestly kind of a huge bummer to me because I would love to use other drip tips in here. But damn it, does this tank vape just real real well. This this is a fantastic vape experience from this tank. So let's get down to brass tacks here. Are you going to need your vape budget hands if you want to pick up the Vaporesso Lux kit with the Skrr tank? Yeah, probably. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from about $75 to $80 for the full kit. So that's, that's pretty firmly in vape budget hands territory. Now, if we're going to play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, is the Vaporesso Lux kit something I would seek out and buy right away? <sighs> Here's the thing, I'm gonna say about this kit, which is what I say about a lot of kits. If there was the option to just buy this Vaporesso Lux mod with its cool, techie, sort of real slick feeling mod alone for a lesser price, and I didn't have to pick up one of these, in my opinion, mostly ugly looking skur tanks. Like if I could just buy this separately for a lower price, I think that's something I'd be much more interested in rather than paying like the freaking $80 for the whole kit to get a tank that I'm not super in love with. And don't get me wrong, like I said, I love the vape I get from this tank and I love, love, love the coil heads for this tank. I just have too many gripes with this tank for it to be like a knock out of the park winner. I much prefer the mod itself rather than this tank. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm gonna leave that. It's the Vaporesso Lux. Uh, I can't put links down in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you, as always, so much for watching, and yeah, let's keep on vaping.